as, even, as an even order, short. Order, the member's time has expired. Mr. Speaker. Fletcher <coughs> uh, Thanks for the opportunity to speak and make a contribution today, Mr. Speaker. I haven't done it for a while, so it's a genuine pleasure to be part of the debate. Can I start by acknowledging the Honourable uh, Tau Hinare, who was in the House uh, earlier during question time, um, and, and uh, thank him for his contribution and his time in Parliament. Unfortunately, what it did in my mind, sir, was make me think of the, uh, the National Party and the opposition over there. Mm. It made me think there is, or there was, excuse me, a genuine contender for the Leader of the Opposition. Yeah. And I tell you why, Mr. Speaker, I tell you why. He came into the room and it made me realise he's got more popularity than the current opposi opposition leader does. It's internally, he's more well liked than the leader is. It's, it's just ridiculous. So that led me on to think what is the situation in the opposition benches over there, Mr. Speaker? And what we saw actually was incredible timing in terms of reinforcing my thinking because as they stood up one after the other, each of those factions within the National Party was represented by those, by those um, spokespeople. And so it, it just goes to show you uh, that everybody's positioning, jockeying and putting themselves out front there to try and be seen by not only the New Zealand public, but by the, uh, the membership of the National Party. And so, you know, congratulations to Mr Mitchell. Good, good job, um, a bit intense, um, and uh, probably way off the mark, Mr Mitchell, <laughs> probably way off the mark. Uh, congratulations to, um, was it Goldsmith? Did, did Goldsmith? I honestly can't remember <laughs> who has stood up this far. But what we are seeing now, Mr Speaker, is a frustrated, and um, disgruntled opposition. Just the right. And so, actually, my point is a serious one because what we're seeing in that, Mr. Speaker, is a, 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 a backroom operations of the opposition yeah. where these factions are um, contending with one another. What that means and what we're seeing as evidence today, Mr. Speaker, is a party that in their dysfunction are not functioning as a true strong opposition. Yeah, right. They're not doing their job properly, is what I'm telling uh, you, Mr. Speaker, and the House. They're not doing the job properly because what we're seeing are petty attacks on personalities and people instead of genuine contesting of ideas, of principles and policy. And it's incredibly upsetting to watch and observe uh, from this side of the House. So instead of debating the issues, we have dysfunctionality and it is evident in the performance of the opposition. What I would like to say... Oh, jeez, that took me way too long to go over there, Mr Speaker. So I was going to talk about the Deputy Finance uh, uh, spokesperson, but, but I can't even remember his name either. So... Look, Mr Speaker, and to those members opposite, for the first time in nearly a decade, we have a government that is focused on the people of New Zealand. All of the people of New Zealand. Yeah, thank you for reiterating, making the point to Mr Mitchell. I don't think he heard me. Thank you so much. Yeah, he's not getting it. So this is a government that is about uh, capability building. It, about, it is about... Despite uh, the, um, uh, is, was it Scott? Is, is it Mr Scott who's going to who's going to create the alt uh, far right breakaway party for national? Next the next leader of the far right uh, party. <laughs> um, universities are important and they need to be invested in. Them. Our hospitals are important and need to be invested in. Homes for people who are struggling right now, guys, get this, are important and need to be provided for those who are desperate. Now, flip that on its head and ask yourselves the question, if we don't do that, if a government doesn't do that, what is the true long-term cost to the people of New Zealand, to this government, when what we would be doing, and unfortunately, Mr Speaker, what this government is doing now is picking up the pieces of 10 years of a party that refused to give genuine investment in the people of New Zealand who need it most in a, in a time they so desperately need it. 
Uh, it's um, basically. I better in there because I'm out of time, and I really want to hear what the uh, opposition has to say to that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Jan Logie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, and I